afternoon, everybody. Quiet in the room. <laughs> we, we are waiting for the rest of our public, at least one other public works member to arrive. Um, but so we'll start on the transportation um, agenda. I'm Council Member Wendy Gruel, joined by our lo and lovely Mr. Rosendahl and lovely. lovely, sorry, and Mr. Parks as well. Uh, and I'd like to, if we could go on item number four um, as a consent item. You okay with that? Okay. And if we could take our two um, uh, appointments to our Board of Transportation Commissioners, if they are I don't here. And I haven't, I haven't looked to see. Uh, I see Grace. Item so number two is a communication from the mayor relative to the appointment of Ms. Stephanie Rodriguez to the Board of Transportation Commissioners for a term ending June 30th, 2010. And we ask you to take Grace as well. And item three is a communication from the mayor relative to the appointment of Ms. Grace you to the Board of Transportation Commissioners for a term ending June 30th, 2011. Great. Thank you both. If you've met before, have you met before? No. No. Okay. Well, glad we could be. You'll be you commissioners together. Know each other. <laughs> um, Stephanie, why don't we take you first because you are a member and we had an opportunity to, to speak uh, recently. Um, you work in, uh, in my district, which I'm very happy about um, and uh, interested in uh, kind of what you'd like to see, and we chatted on the phone again about um, serving on this Transportation Commission, which we think is, is very important. There's a lot of issues coming forward. In fact, um, uh, some of the parking revenue issues that have become, um, I don't know, controversial, but at the top of everyone's mind right now um, are coming forward. So if you'd like to just say a brief statement, and we'll... Yeah, I, I would. I'm, I'm a native of L.A. I'm thrilled to be... Um, Your name for the record. Oh, Stephanie Rodriguez. Thrilled to be here. Um, my career has been public service, a different side of it, in media, I'm um, a broadcast journalist, and uh, for the last eight years been doing public affairs for KCBS and KCAL. Um, one of the things I really want to bring to the commission is a lot of good things come from transportation. And there are some controversial things, but I think sometimes uh, sort of managing it and marketing the good stuff isn't always out there. I think that's one of the things I bring um, to the commission that I'd like to really um, work with and help with. You know, sometimes people get part of the information, but not all of it. And, you know, that's our job in media, to make sure they're getting all the information. So I'm really hoping that being part of the commission will make a difference and, you know, get the word out, what's good and what's important, what people need to know. Right. Thank you. Grace, would you like to also make a few opening comments and tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Grace Yu. I'm currently the executive director of the Korean American Coalition, but I'm a native Los Angelina, having graduated from uh, Tom LaBonge's Marshall. Hi. <laughs> I'm a true barrister through and through. Uh, I'm delighted to be uh, appointed to the Transportation Committee, and I'm looking forward to serving here. There's so much that is great about our city. Transportation and traffic is not one of our best sides. I think uh, some of the things that DOT and uh, the Transportation Committee does well is the DASH program and I'm hoping that we might be able to implement a few more of those in strategic areas to ease the uh, traffic flow. I think with the somewhat of an uproar with the new uh, meter system for the parking, uh, if we can ease that with the local communities that are being affected, I think that would be helpful to the community members. I'm just looking to learn and do the best that I can, and I'm sure together we're going to make the traffic problem be a little bit uh, less distracting. What's the uproar you're talking about? Well, Larchmont, the Larchmont area is very upset as to the uh, the hours that the fact that they are now implementing Sunday as a pay for meters uh, the people are just uh, upset it's to the time limits things like that so that's what I've heard through Lar Larchmont um, and I think um, and uh, I see some of the DOT representatives we haven't both I know Mr. Parks had um, someone was mentioning this to me as well that um, we had a lot of concern, Ventura Boulevard, others, that the notice of the change, that they may not like the change, but a lot of the business owners didn't know really about it and its implementation, that as we go forward and change those parking meters to the space meters and at the same time uh, raise the rates, um, that's really important. And you can, both of you can attest to because you do public affairs in your, in your positions and educational work. So we think that's critically uh, important. 
and, and the commission can, again, play a role, because traffic is the number one issue in Los Angeles. Um, everyone, no matter what, where you live, what socioeconomic level you are, um, you're impacted by it. And so it's a really important commission. And uh, I, I've had the pleasure of knowing both of these women in, uh, before they were appointed, uh, so I uh, wholeheartedly support them and want to ask if either of my colleagues have any questions. Go ahead, first one. Uh, um, just, just in general, um, what do you think about bicycles and bicycle rights and, and uh, how they fit in with our transportation issues? It's a big deal these days, and I propose a bicycle bill of rights. We, we had a first discussion on it in council yesterday. It will go through a process and come back. We've had incidents with people on bikes, and now we're living in a world where it's a smart move uh, to ride a bike, if you can, rather than a car for obvious reasons of your own personal health terms of energy, uh, the climate uh, issues in terms of exhaust, uh, and we are not as far down the road as other places are. Do you have any feelings, either of you, about bicycles? Yeah, I do, actually. I know the city of West Hollywood is just the leader in bicycle rights. I am bicyclist for bicyclists, and I know in my neighborhood, I live in the community of Arlita, um, there are more adults riding bikes than there are children, um, and I think it's really important. There, I see cars cutting them off all the time. You know. People don't understand that uh, it's definitely an important part of transportation in our city, especially as far as people need to go. And uh, in our neighborhood as well, we have you know a lot of people that don't drive cars. They take public transportation, and to get to that, sometimes they need to take their bike. So I'm, I'm very supportive of, of rights for bicyclists. Thank you. It's funny that you mentioned that on, uh, I think uh, it was, what day was it? Saturday or Sunday, I ran into friends um, out near the Beverly Center who were riding their bikes and they had their chicken and their steak uh, in backpacks with them and I'm proud of them for doing that and making that effort. I also am concerned as to safety, not just because the bicyclists are uh, in traffic lanes but because the drivers are yet not fully cognizant of this. I mean I've lived in areas where bike paths are the norm. Um, I think we have a... Where was that? Um, out towards uh, DC and um, some parts of Jersey that I, when I was in law school. So it can happen, but I have some concerns about safety. If we can all figure out a way to make this happen, I'd be happy. Mm -hmm. uh, just a general question about buses. Uh, which to me um, we underutilize in the sense of appreciation of them. We probably have the biggest bus system in America with 1.4 million people in the, in the MTA, as Art will tell you, that, that take the buses. Um, bus only lanes is something we're working on. We're going to get an update on Wilshire bus only lanes. Uh, I've been asking for a bus on Venice Boulevard that would be an express bus, and someday I'll get that, I hope. Um, What's your general sensing of supporting buses and bus-only lanes? Um, I definitely support them. I think more people would utilize them if they did have express buses. They, they know they'd get where they need to get quickly rather than having to transfer. Um, I think that's important. I, again, I live in the valley and, you know, the busway, I cross it every day and it's very quick change. There's not a lot of uh, waiting for us cars um, and it seems to work well. Okay. Uh, you know, I know there are uh, bus lanes currently going on Wilshire Boulevard. Uh, I'm not ha sure how effective it is because I don't know what the timelines are, or how quickly they travel. Uh, I'd be really curious to know what those numbers are. I'm in favor of it. Uh, but I really do need to know what those numbers are before I can say okay. yes. No, I appreciate both of you on both those issues, bicycles and buses. Some focus uh, uh, would, would, would be extremely uh, positive, uh, you know, received by all of us. My last question, uh, just a, a general concept about uh, at grade and above grade for light rail. Um, I strongly have a position on that. I'm just curious to either of you have a feeling about at grade or, or you know, above grade or grade separation of the light rails? Uh, once again, I'm just going to be that attorney and sort of give you that cautious statement here. I think most of the time it probably should be above grade, but there are locations where it might make sense for it to not be, uh, just because of traffic reasons. That's my initial take. Mm -hmm. Did you want to comment on that? No. I'd 
I'm with her. I think we okay. have to really. But I hope you look into that because it's controversial right now in the expo line. Phase one has a couple of stops at grade. There's lots of issues about that. Frankly, when it comes into phase two and goes into my district, I want an above grade. And if, say, councilman costs more money, I want to spend the right money to do the right thing and not get any other issues. Oh, so no. I'm going Definitely. To be strong. We know how to be cost effective, and it does not mean necessarily the cheapest is the best. Yeah, and my last thing I want to make is just because you had a twist in the beginning there. Now that Measure R has passed, uh, we're in a, 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 the stars are lining up. You're joining the Transportation Committee at the most uh, auspicious time in the history of our transportation situation. We have the beginnings of a pot of money to kickstart major projects. And when we talk in, in one of these uh, agenda items here, um, which, which is item one, that's the joint uh, uh, committee meeting, uh, we're really looking at supporting uh, both from a federal level and a, a local level, meaning the county level, the opportunity to get us out of this gridlock. That has been only getting worse. I, I move that we uh, yeah, thank move you. forward. Mr. Parks, any comments? Second. Great. Second. Okay. Thank you. Unanimously approved. We'll send you to council. Uh, they'll let you know. Do we know the dates? Is it next um, week? It will be on Tuesday, the Do you have 16th. A card for this? Okay. No. Oh, I'm sorry. On item there two, is, we do. There okay. is a card on two. Thank you. Thank you. There's a card. So, Mr. Sachs, would you like to come up? I apologize. It was and just for the record, the uh, we have a quorum now of public works with Mr. Smith here, so we'll be able to go uh, back in order to, to that first issue. Yes, thank you, Arnold Sachs. I just have a couple of questions. I've directed some comments at the Transportation Board or Transportation Committee. I've also directed comments at the City Council. Um, I have a pet peeve. There is a company that I believe is misusing the logo of the city of LA at the airport. Um, nobody seems to take it seriously. So I was wondering as Transportation Commission members, is that under your jurisdiction? Would you something you look into? And uh, additionally, um, there was a problem um, that was brought up at the last Taxi Commission meeting. And um, it, it, it was a situation where some drivers got ticketed were operating as bandits but I don't believe the cabs were impounded and the reason the cabs weren't impounded is because the companies were licensed in the city of LA but the cabs themselves were operating in another di district in, in, in West Hollywood so they didn't have an LA emblem on their car now it's my understanding that the city's ordinance is that if you operate a Banded taxi cab, your cab will be impounded. Maybe you could look into why those cabs were not impounded, because if they're not impounding cabs, because the city, either they are impounding cabs as as banded taxis, or they're not impounding cabs as banded taxis. And so I, I just like you to have to look into that, and I'd also like you to have to look into the company that misusing the city logo. They had an ordinance. They had a committee hearing. They had an agenda item that the, the schools wanted to put the city emblem on their uniforms. And they had steps after steps. They had a committee hearing, and it went before the city council. This company is, has a logo that is so similar to the city ordinance, city, count, city logo, or the taxi cab logo, that it's confusing and it makes it seem like the people actually work for the city and it Thank should you, be looked Mr. into. Thank you. Nobody That'll else be, is doing uh, anything about it. That, that will uh, be under the Taxi Cab Commission, um, which is not under this, this commission, but we'll make sure that they look at that. And we've been cracking down on bandit taxi cabs. Uh, Madam you. Chair, yes. uh, may I make a, an announcement? Um, item number one, there was a notation that the mayor's office is to submit a report for the infrastructure projects. Uh, for the record, the uh, copy of the mayor's office submittal is in the back for uh, public viewing. Thank you. Uh, we will go back uh, to number one um, on the uh, agenda. Item number one is a Gruel Smith Thank you. motion. We voted. Thank they you. Approved? They did get approved. Good. So Good. you give them your. Good. Okay. Um, and if we could ask the department and um, the mayor's office to come up to the table. Item number one is the Gruel Smith motion of mayor's office to report relative to a list of infrastructure projects that, projects that would be eligible for President elect Obama's proposed economic stimulus package. Great. 
Colleagues, we uh, introduced this uh, motion um, to begin to prepare for a potential um, investment uh, by President-elect and this Congress hopefully for a stimulus package, uh, particularly where we need it in the infrastructure for our, our region. And uh, although we have, and I think as we will hear uh, from our representatives, that, um, that we, we don't have any criteria necessarily they put forward. He's not President of the United States yet, but um, we, in, until January 20th. Uh, but we all know, and as someone who participated in the last um, uh, administration and the beginning of that administration, serving here in the city of Los Angeles and moving to the administration, the importance um, of being ready uh, for the stimulus. And in uh, 1993, uh, we were just coming off the uh, uh, riot, civil disturbance, um, and were asked at the time for infrastructure projects that could move forward as part of that economic stimulus passage as we were looking at empowerment zones, enterprise zones, a number of things uh, to be able to do. So uh, we cannot um, underestimate the importance of being a city ready to take advantage um, and a state being able to take advantage of any funds that may come forward. Um, the mayor's office I know has been working with our office and I know I think the uh, both Mr. Uh, Rosendahl's and, and Mr. Park's office uh, to begin this, this process to look at anything in, in fact that might be eligible um, as we go forward on projects um, that we think can be done quickly, which we know will be part of the criteria, yeah. uh, which is the, those projects that are ready to go. One of the things I also learned during that time on being both sides of the table uh, was the importance of them really being ready. Uh, that uh, as much as there's a lot of projects we'd like to see happen, ultimately when we make our, um, our ask, uh, we need to have our own strict criteria as to what's ready and what's not ready. And I know we'll look to the mayor's office for uh, some of that leadership along with the city council, but the importance of picking projects, um, submitting projects ultimately that are really ready to go um, and that will create those jobs now um, and be able to do that. So. With that, colleagues, we all have, and maybe Mr. Rosendahl would like to make some opening comments as well as chair, as chair of the Public uh, Works Committee. I do have some questions that want to hear from you all first, um, that there are a, a list of, of uh, potential projects. This is not the complete list. Um, this is the first stab, as I would add it, or a little bit more than a first stab. Um, if there are projects or issues that you would like colleagues uh, for um, the Mayor's Office and Bureau of Engineering and others to consider, um, today is not our day to approve which projects. It really is to say, are there any things that are missing here, what the status is, and how we go forward. Um, so uh, we won't debate which project is what. Um, we really just want to say, are there any things we're missing, um, and any other questions we might have for the mayor's office. So with yeah. that, um, uh, Mr. Rosenthal. And Rosendale. as Chair Public Works, Public Works is absolutely delighted we're doing this joint hearing, though I'm on transportation. I could be at both. <laughs> Um, but uh, wearing my hat as, as public works. Uh, this is an incomplete list. It's a beginning. It's a step in the right direction. I want all council offices contacted officially after today's meeting, given the complete understanding of what has appeared on their CD lists as, as their area, for them to analyze it and to get an appreciation of it. There are specifics that I have that you have on my list, but first I want to make sure you separate CD11, which is CD11, from the airport. Airport's not CD11, it's the regional airport. And the same thing with Ms. Why you had a billion dollars there? Yeah, that's we it. That's, and Ms. Hans District, mm -hmm. uh, which obviously includes the harbor, is a separate <laughs> issue. These are proprietary departments and separate from us. But the details of some of these issues for my office, and I think for all 15 offices, need more clarifications and discussion. I think it's a great first cut. I think what we're doing as a city and as a county with Measure R has put our money where our mouth is. We're on board board more than most counties in the nation right now and the mayor being part of the economics uh, package of, of, of the president-elect uh, puts us in very good steed and I'm thrilled Jim Clark with the initial cut that we're doing because it shows we're moving in that right direction but all departments in the city have to be engaged besides each council office and I urge that this initial discussion which we will move forward obviously uh, needs to to be touched by every city department in a more thorough way uh, and every council office and then we come back with an addition. I also agree with um, my colleague here, the Chair of, of Transportation, that we're not going to be fighting over money today in any way, shape or form and frankly my gut tells me the more we put on the plate uh, to take to the new president, 
uh, the stronger position we're in, uh, because our needs are great, and with our Measure R in play, we're in a much more credible position. We're also going to want to know how we're dealing with the other cities in the county and the coordination with the supervisors, great coordination between supervisors and our mayor in this most recent moment here. So we're all on the same wavelength in the state as well. But as a first cut, I just want, want us all to know uh, we'll move forward with this as we talk about it. But, but please, we need to do more homework and get more involvement in it. I'm Jim Clark, Director of Federal Relations for Mayor Villaraigosa. If I could, I'd like to make a sort of read from a statement that I That's prepared true. to give. And uh, Chairwoman Gruel, Chairman Rosendahl, members of the Transportation Public Works Committee, uh, I'd like to give you a little bit of some background and context in, in how we got to this with the list. Uh, several months ago, the Transportation Committee was interested in reviewing a list of potential projects that could qualify for funding under the Reauthorization of the Surface Transportation Act, or Safety Lou. At that time, I appeared before the committee and expressed the opinion that the reauthorization may not occur until late 2009 or possibly 2010, but that a more pressing need might be the development of a list of infrastructure projects that could be, quote, ready to go, unquote, in a second economic stimulus package. That legislation, H.R. 7110, passed the House in September, but was held up in the Senate and not acted upon. Since then, however, we have had a deepening economic and financial crisis, a $770 billion bailout of Wall Street investment firms and banks, and the election of a new president. President-elect Obama has stated his goal is to have an economic stimulus package on his desk to be signed into law the day he takes office. What is still evolving are what are the elements of that stimulus package, how much funding will there be, and what will be the process for the delivery of those funds, and to whom will the funding go? What we do know is that the infrastructure projects will be a big part of the package as they were in H.R. 7110. We also know that these projects need to be ready to go, meaning that they are cleared for and ready to begin construction, presumably within six months and will be completed within two years. We also know that President-elect is interested in funding projects that create 2.5 million new jobs with an emphasis on green jobs that also improve our environment, reduce congestion, and further stimulate economic activity. What we don't know now is how much money will go into the stimulus. Shortly after the election, President-elect Obama mentioned $25 billion for infrastructure projects. House Transportation Infrastructure Committee Chairman James Overstar threw out a figure of $800 billion, but is currently working on a bill that would be in the range of $45 billion, including $18.2 billion for roads and bridges, $6.5 billion for transit, $9 billion for environmental infrastructure. So we don't really know until we actually see the legislation how much there will be, which would, should be in the next week or two. Secondly, we don't know how the money will be distributed. We know that it is the intention of President-elect Obama to distribute the money as quickly as possible. We had hoped that he might create an economic stimulus infrastructure fund similar to what was done on the Wall Street bailout, hopefully with a lot of improvement to that. But what would require, that would require legislation which would require additional time. The current thinking is that the funds would be provided through the existing funding sources that has two implications. First, that projects that didn't have a direct link to a federal funding source would probably not be considered. And second, most of the infrastructure funds would pass through the states. This is problematic for several reasons, including the state's own infrastructure needs, the administrative overhead states usually apply to pass through funds, and the delay for cities in receiving those funds. This last issue was of such concern to large city mayors that the U.S. Conference of Mayors assembled a list of ready-to-go infrastructure projects to demonstrate the need for direct funding to cities and metro areas. And on Monday, large city mayors, including Mayor Villaraigosa, participated in meetings with key federal officials, and a press conference in Washington, D.C. to echo that call. But as of today, we do not know how the money will be distributed and to whom. What I can tell you is that for the first time in several years, the city now has a current database of real, ready-to-go projects that would appear to meet the proposed criteria for federal funding by the Obama administration and or Congress. That's good news, and I want to give special thanks here to Ted Allen, Leo Pastelnikov, Chris Espinoza, and Michael Wayno for putting together the database, acquiring the data from the departments, and pre preparing the reports. The projects on this list were provided by the city departments without any condition other than that they be ready to go to construction or acquisition, thanks to the many department staff who assembled these lists. The bad news is that 
if you can call it that, is that we have much more infrastructure funding needs than we will ever have funded through the Federal Economic Stimulus Program. In the list before you, there are a total of 189 projects with a total project cost of $13.5 billion and a federal funding need of $7.5 billion. There may be even more funding needs in each council district than we could anticipate receiving for the entire city. Therefore, if funding does become available to cities and we are asked to provide a list, we will need to prioritize and trim this list. While I believe that some of the criteria will be imposed as part of the funding package, we can assume items such as job creation, environmental enhancements, congestion reduction, and economic activity will probably be among the factors to narrow the list. The mayor would like to also add a local match requirement as well. That winnowing process, however, can be put off for another day. Suffice it to say, we do have ready-to-go projects that can respond quickly if economic stimulus funding is available. I'm happy to answer any questions you have about the process of putting the list together or the latest insights into what the federal government intends to do. Uh, fortunately, I'm backed up here by Gary Lee Moore and, and other members of, from the departments here that can answer technical questions if you have them about the list. Thank you. Great. Thank you. And uh, I think we'll go right to, to questions if you, you don't mind um, and uh, appreciate that, that overview. Um, and I know that Rules is asking for their um, by a, a report by Friday, um, so anything that has been added. And so I know you've had some initial conversations with council offices and reiterate what Mr. Uh, Rosendahl said as well, uh, which is to ensure we're getting everyone's input in that. And um, there shouldn't be any surprises on this document because the reason we had moved forward on trying to do, look at safety, Lou, and you'll see in another item today we have in Measure R is really never to be caught off guard uh, with a, uh, the fact that there may be funds available and that we should always be ready um, to compete um, for these kinds of dollars across uh, the country. I know. Um, uh, are there the projects from the city's list of capital improvement projects included in here as well, the overall kind of capital improvements we have? Do you know? I guess it would be Gary Lee. Hi. Good, uh, good afternoon. Gary Moore, city engineer. Um, in Some of those that might even be debt funded, you know, I mean that we could, again, grow the number. If we can get funding from, from the federal government, we can use some of that money to provide support for other pro projects. I Yes, so, uh, some of the projects from all the departments have uh, looked at the opportunities to uh, supplement some of the city funding with federal requests. So, yes, I, I would say across the board, all the departments were, were very aggressive in looking to supplement because then you can take those dollars and obviously use them in other projects and continue the uh, stimulus uh, that we need here in Southern California. This question, we just went through a, a, a budget, exer not an exercise, actually, Mr. Parks. It was a real thing of cutting um, yesterday uh, a number of, of items within the city that were infrastructure-related. Um, some of the things I'm very concerned about, 50-50 sidewalk program, some of our, our street repaving, and some of the um, tree trimming, turn signals, um, et cetera. Are those projects, are those kinds of things included on this list as well? Yes, there are. There. Okay. Yeah, there's a lot of those. I think one of the things too is the uh, is that by saying that these are ready to go and that they have to be able to start either turning dirt or acquire within six months meant that that these a lot of these projects were projects that were already under construction and that are experiencing shortfalls. Right. Um, because apparently the, the way the city does it is they don't really start a project until they know they have all the money together. So. Um, so for the most part, we see a lot of shortfalls, but there are some supplanting of where we could take um, local money and take it out and put federal money in. And we, so it's a combination of the two. And I know some of those projects, um, even under the the, the um, safety lieu that had been adopted, um, and we had been notified by the federal government that their commitments that they had made, they may not be able to fulfill um, because of the gas tax fund, that it was not reaching the level that it should. Um, so. My assumption is those are included as well, where the federal government has shortchanged us. Correct. Okay, so um, that they would fulfill at least their even ongoing commitment, even more so going to the next um, level. Um, and do we, uh, uh, from the perspective of the safety re reauthorization, do you believe that will similarly limit that being probably not adopted in this next year? That it'll go more towards the 210. I mean, well, it's the crystal the, ball, but I think last time I talked to one of the things that might happen if there's a lot of infrastructure, a lot of transportation kinds of infrastructure projects that are put in an economic stimulus there that lessens the need to you know they can push back the surface transportation surface. reauthorization okay and uh, do you know if they are um, considering and some of the criteria local match um, as a requirement 
actually we're in a we're in a good position here in Los Angeles because of the fact of the that we've taken the responsibility like Prop R and other things like that. Uh, when the city, when the other mayors from the cities um, went back to D.C. this earlier this week, they were not inclined. They and the governors themselves have asked that there there not be you know a local match requirement. Uh, so we're at, we're a little bit of a difference. Uh, it would benefit us, though, and we think that that's a if good there was selling a, local match. a good selling point to say that well, here you can leverage your federal dollars more effectively because there's local money as, as well. Well, and we've argued that on the state level too. I mean, we're a self-help county where we have you know really um, gone to our voters and asked for that, and uh, there should be extra points, so to speak, right. for that to <clears throat> encourage to get more funds uh, for this this area. Um, I, I know, and maybe Mr. Parks will mention this, but Mr. Um, Wesson said, remember Expo, the Expo line and additional funding. So uh, I told him I would mention that, and you may want to reiterate that, Mr. Parks, um, as, as well. Um, so the next steps are to go to um, Rules Committee uh, next week. Monday? Okay, Monday. Um, go to Rules Committee next Monday, and then really be ready to go to the full council next week. Wednesday? Okay. Uh, so that uh, we have something in case anything happens in that first time we're really ready to, to move forward. Um, so colleagues, as you, as you cull through this list, some may just be seeing it, some may have seen it in the last 24 hours, to look and see if there's any other projects. Um, they've not put it, been put in priority order um, at all. It's just really throwing everything out there um, as possibilities. Um, so we encourage you to add additional uh, projects per se, but I think it runs from soup to nuts and helps us um, everything from street repaving to some of the other bigger transportation programs that we want to see. Um, so I'll go to Mr. Rosendahl, my, the Chair of Public Works, and then we'll go to our Vice Chairs. Yeah, um, um, thanks again. Uh, first, um, you heard, as you mentioned in your opening comments, um, focus on jobs uh, is one of the big uh, stimulus suggestions here. Uh, can you tell us how many jobs each of these projects will generate? Any ballpark sense of how many jobs we're looking at through all of this? We will be able, that's part of the exercise that we want to do, um, and that's something that we need to do. Uh, there are certain formulas, and I'll let, let Gary speak more, and there are certain formulas that you can use for estimating um, job creation based on the type of project or the dollar value of right. it. But we do need to do that because we, if that's going to be one of the criteria, we need to be able to demonstrate that. It may be even harder, though, to um, demonstrate in some cases what a green job is, you know, in terms of uh, if, you're, if you're working on a construction crew and doing a uh, sewer pipeline, or is that a green job or, you know, you're changing out a light bulb and uh, um, whether that is. But Gary, you right. have and, and, and Gary, when, when you do address it, because I know you will, uh, also what I didn't see enough in here is our sewer system, which is old, decrepit, <coughs> falling apart. That is literally billions of dollars worth of projects. But, but before you answer the job thing first, and I got a couple of questions for you. In uh, many, uh, many capital projects, you can kind of look at it. Uh, if you have a project, 60% of it would be directly people working on the project and the other 40 percent would be the materials that you bring in whether it's asphalt or whether it's pipes or so forth like that so uh, those are the types of formula obviously if you then had a, a you know a 10 million dollar project six million of it is direct labor you would ha use an average uh, for uh, cost of a of a person and you could figure out the labor hours so we'll be working with the mayor's office to help them with that type of calculation very good. Another question is, when, when you talk about expanding these projects and talk about priorities, um, you have a group here that you've put in here, um, uh, Southwest Yard, Thatcher Yard, Lincoln Pool, 109th Street Pool, uh, Costello Pool, Runyon Canyon parking lot. Of course, I would add a couple myself, uh, the Venice High School Pool, which has been shut down, a huge asset uh, for, for people in Venice, and also I would raise a general question about Rec and Park and a lot of the pools we have that we shut down that maybe uh, from a prevention intervention strategy could be uh, more equipped to be open longer. Are any of these ideas from Rec and Park uh, that Mr. LeBange knows so well uh, thrown into this kind of stuff? I'll, ha I'll have to check and see, sir, about that. I'm, I can't, yeah, I'm, we'll have to 
Well, when you go back into the, yeah. to the, to, to the uh, discussion of moving forward, I think we should take Rec and Park as, as an example of issues of capital dollar needs in Rec and Park that would be fabulous if, if we looked at it from a different angle now that we're talking jobs and economic stimulus and we're talking about quality of life. We're also talking about gang intervention and prevention strategies. But I definitely want to make sure we put on our list the, the Venice uh, uh, pool uh, as well as the Mar Vista pool and how we would deal with it. That's, that's it for me. It's a general brush today. Mr. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Clark. Mr. Warren, thank you for the engineer. Issues, I uh, just wanted to ask, I think uh, the match fund is real key to that. And along with the match fund, I think we should review anything that we have a relationship with other cities in the region. I believe there's uh, 27 cities that we treat their waste at Hyperion. Is that right, Gary? I'm not sure. The, you're probably 27, right about there. Mm -hmm. and if there's a relationship, anything with our sewer system, as Mr. Rosendahl articulated, <coughs> we're, we're tying in 27 other cities too. I think it will be give us strength in Washington to say it's not just Los Angeles. Sometimes it's easier for them to pass out things. Yeah. If they, they'll go to a smaller city, they'll have a larger impact mm -hmm. than if they go to a bigger city. I think we are going to articulate our relationship with other municipalities right. in whichever way possible at that. Also, I asked you, Mr. Clark, and I don't know if there's people here, but in, I believe it was 1978 when there was the last federal <laughs> stimulus project that told us you could get to work quick, you build these things. Mm. We should review that process somehow, some way, even call in some of the retired people who work for the city. I know a mistake that was made, and we, we combined multi-purpose centers where we had seniors with gymnasiums. Yeah. It did not work. Ultimately, now, in the last few years, we've had to take those buildings and make either one a gym and one a senior center. Multi-purpose sounded good, but it didn't work. We should look at those mistakes so they don't duplicate them as well. Also, reviewing our bond issues, whether uh, anything of the fire, the police, uh, the uh, uh, recreation of parks, or whether the library would relate to that, because I don't see that broken out in the uh, report. Also, I don't want to say I'm disappointed, Gary, but we've been working on bridges for the whole lifelong. And, 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 and where are some bridges in there? Why aren't bridges ready to go? When we, uh, I think Mr. Rosendahl, then chair of the uh, Public Works Committee, articulated uh, that we must get organized with yeah. our bridges when that tragedy happened in the Midwest. Yep. I'm looking at the Hyperion Bridge. I'm looking at uh, the Sixth Street Bridge. I'm looking at just around the city. Uh, looking at the Barham Bridge. Uh, where are we on bridges, and why don't we see more of that there? Answer the question. Now, can hold I, my can time. I, yes, can I? Yeah, we're going to hold time. I just want to add, too, because we, as I recall, we had a lot of bridges that we're moving forward and we were planning for, and then the money dried up. And so it would seem as though there were, some of those would have been on that list ready to go. Did engineering standards change that you've had to shelf all those plans? I mean, you had plans for every bridge. <laughs> Okay, I'm ready. I'm ready to answer. I just wanted to make sure those are the end of the questions. <laughs> uh, first of all, um, the criteria that was uh, set forth here is that projects that are ready to start construction in August of 2009. So uh, uh, we, uh, unfortunately, in these tough times, do not have designers just sitting around working. Uh, so the last 10 years I, you've had. I'm, and so in this package, I don't think anybody's been sitting around, Gary. But I just think no, no, as a no, council I'm, member. I just want to articulate, bridges is a big thing. Mr. Rosendahl brought it to our attention when there was a tragedy in the Midwest. You know, I worked for years on the bridges. We've had community meetings on bridges, and I'm shocked to see that bridges aren't part of this. There are six bridges included at $151 million worth of bridges that are part of this 189 projects that the mayor's office has brought forward. Uh, in bridges, there's usually a lot of right-of-way issues involved in widening of bridges and so forth. And once again, as these were the bridges that are available to be ready by August. If the criteria is extended or there's a, uh, a time window is increased, then the number of bridges would absolutely increase. I would ask that you report to Mr. Smith's committee on updated on bridges, because I'm shocked that you're not. The Barham Bridge has been talked about as long as there's been talked about bridges and the fact that there's no plan, it uh, shocks me that we don't have that there. And I feel bad as a representative that I wasn't as uh, aggressive to the Bureau of Engineering to make sure that we're looking at that and having some plan to be ready, because other things happen. So let me just repeat on the, some of these things here. Uh, our relationship with other cities is real important. If we could do something with other cities, we could tell the delegation. Uh, review the federal program, look at our bond issues, the bridges, 
I want to see something on bikeways uh, where it's possible. The Los Angeles River bikeway is ready to roll. Uh, pardon the pun, but let's look at that right away. And also on the freeway system. So these same dollars that we're going to compete with are also going to be available to the state for the freeway system? Well, if we're fortunate to, to see any of this money, right. the state doesn't take, I mean, the state has a backlog of $4.4 .4 billion just for their own highway maintenance throughout right. the state. What we think, though, the advantage will, what we hope will happen will either there'll be some direction that money has to come down to the cities and that we have the advantage on things like job creation and, and other Got it. Things. Is anybody in this room drive on the passing the freeway through the tunnels? It used to be Figueroa Street? Yeah. Okay, do you ever come and it gets real slow when you get to the last tunnel? Yes. Okay, Go should ahead. that be fixed somehow, some way? Are we fixing the Riverside Drive Bridge soon, Gary? And have, yes. we, have we looked at that to see any kind of partnership with the state agency where we make sense? When you can make a, a easy money in Las Vegas if you go to the boards, and I haven't been there in 20 years, and it says, when does traffic back up on the Hollywood Freeway going south? And it says, at 1 o'clock in the afternoon at Santa Monica Boulevard, and at Vermont, because of bad engineering. So I hope the city of Los Angeles, even though it is not our jurisdiction, has some words to say about the freeway system because our department of transportation which houses in the dot building and got off the rent over on figueroa which now that we own over on figueroa is supposed to have that relationship and i know some of you are champions of that as i look at you we got to talk if the dollars are going to the state highway system we got to make sure it uh, uh, uh removes the choking that takes place on the freeway system and that is job creation as well on that match funds I mentioned, and also Mr. Rosendahl mentioned the uh, airports and harbor, and DWP projects are not listed here. Why are DWP projects not listed here at all? Are they not eligible because they're a utility? They are. We have both uh, water and power projects listed. Uh, uh, separate? No. What happened? We uh, have a what? couple of things, Councilman. On yeah. the water and power projects, um, they, they need to fill in which council district the projects are in. It was included. Right now it's under various, so it would be under the last pages. And that's one of the things that I, I think Jim said or will request to, to make some uh, technical corrections. They're on the page 19 of 20 are the water and power projects. DWP has 29 projects at uh, $6 billion with uh, an ask of $3 billion. And it's on page 19 of 20. So basically they would do this to take it off the ratepayers and have it done there. Okay. I also want to mention, too, and I think it's true, uh, there's many things, whether it's in Griffith Park or in the zoo, there's always a plaque. My high school stadium at John Marshall High, it says, thanks to the WPA. I should we, whatever happens, we should recognize it. And if we are so successful, Mr. Clark, in the mayor's efforts to receive money for Los Angeles, wherever it is done in the city, we should recognize a congressional representative the same way you recognize a council person uh, in the project that is there jointly so it shows the cooperation that the people are seeing Main Street get help instead of Wall Street. And make sure you give enough money to Bill Robertson so Main Street has no potholes. <laughs> um, Mr. Smith. Yes, uh, Jim, how do you want us to make uh, some uh, suggested adjustments to this? You want us to send you a letter identifying the project? Or you want me to tell you right now? We actually, uh, if you'd like, we, we do have a matrix kind of table that we're asking, that we ask the departments to kind of complete and fill out, and that way they can be added well, into that, the... Well, that, the project I'm talking about, it's a Balboa, uh, San Fernando Road improvements, was on DOT's matrix, but it's not on this suggested list. And, and so my concern is that it's a project that has three elements to it. Two elements are ready to go right now. I mean, we could be under construction on two of the three elements within six months. Oh. The third amount is just to negotiate an agreement on an easement and moving some property lines on a gas station, and we have a willing owner who wants to work with us on that. It probably wouldn't be done in six months, but it could be in that two-year time frame to include that transportation upgrade to Balboa Boulevard, which would be significant for that part of the valley. Well, then, so, to answer your question, then just send us an email with whoever the appropriate staffer for us to follow up with, okay. and, and we'll get the information and add, make sure it's yeah. included. That's good. Yeah. And on, on the issue of safety, Lewis, Ms. Ms. Gruel brought up, this one of these elements had a safety component to it. Are we just, are we been told that safety, Lou, is just nothing's going to get funded now further the last couple of years of the safety, Lou? I think we had been um, notified that uh, they, they never told us how much, but that their commitments uh, would, may not be fulfilled because of a lack of funding. And so I think 
which stops us as Unica until we have so much money we're not going forward. So the hope is that may supplant if the gas fund isn't able to, to fund them. So if we had a safety element to this project that would help or hurt to mention it? I think it would help. help. Okay. All right. Well, I'll get that information to you right away then. I appreciate that. And Councilman Smith, you asked about the Balboa Road in San Fernando River. Um, the project that the Department of Transportation turned in, their scheduled construction start date was September 1st, and as, as you heard, so we maybe that could up. be moved up by a month and it would. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Here, Paul, that wasn't September, that was June. <laughs> <laughs> typo. Yes. There was a typo I want to correct. We got it. Got it. Got that typo. Okay. Which we should look at, and I think that's a very good point, as they're only looking at those that are in the next right. six months. Um, and as we all know, we're, we can sometimes push the departments to move quicker um, on what, where those problems are. So um, we, we've done that, Gary Lee, more. more. More Park Bridge not finished yet, but right soon? Yes. Okay. I will come back. I have some other questions, but Mr. Parks has not had a chance. Yeah. Let me just ask, is this list the all-inclusive list for the city, or is it just construction and transportation no it's uh, all it's I want to say it's an all-inclusive list but I was receiving a project about quarter to two today so um, but yes we, we've gone out I mean it includes the proprietary departments it includes all the engineering departments it includes the DOT it includes Metro projects um, one thing that we might add into this uh, we haven't gotten this list would be LAUSD if they have projects that are also in the city that probably would get added to this the reason I asked that is that just yesterday we got a, a little email from National League of Cities and they are working with cities throughout the nation to get them prepared and one of the things that unless I missed it in this list that they talk about uh, primarily uh, in addition to all the construction what was technology and environmental projects is that something well, envi environmental projects would. Um, that was, I mean, the, we yeah, sent the it technology to ones. Well, I think we got four from um, from ITA department that we got. But uh, part of the thing too is, like I said, is that they're probably going to look at an existing federal funding mechanism to. Mm -hmm. So you have to try to make sure that it's something that can be funded. Yeah. I see a little bit of it in the in the uh, convention center, but I didn't see it. Yeah, we'll, we can go back and look at those, but I know we did have originally, I think, four projects from uh, technology projects. Because right, that was, like I said, just yesterday, they okay. are sending it, but in fact, uh, we sent a copy of the email to the CAO and the CLA, but they, we thought okay. they were working on it. The other thing is, is that in looking uh, at these projects, if I understand the process, this will go to one more committee and then it goes to council for approval. Mm -hmm. Now. Do we have the ability to alter them once they leave the city or? Well, uh, again, I think uh, we would be lucky, we'll be lucky if we get any federal funding that comes down from a stimulus, hopefully. I mean, that's what we're fighting for. Yeah. And, and once we find out what that will be and what the categories and criteria will be, then this list will have to be so we have looked to at and, and yeah, and there might be something yeah, that would be put right. into it that we didn't know at the time or whatever. But okay. this is at least gives us a basis and we know that we can, if in fact there is federal money, that we can respond quickly with projects. The other thing is that we have had a number of studies that go along with MTA on the Expo Line, the Crenshaw, and also uh, LADOT is doing some studies for us on south of the 10 freeway looking at South LA. Uh, and then I believe we had, and I don't, may not have the right term for it, we had some a, a, a gigantic list of projects that came from LADOT in which I believe we, we submitted them for call for projects in the last year. Are those part of the discussion at all? Uh, I mean, yeah. Do I have the right term? Go ahead. Because the one I'm, the thing I'm thinking about is that we discussed, I think in this committee around Expo Park, and we had a number. Is that the list where we submitted it for call for projects? Uh, yeah, we did submit that project for the call, but um, uh, because the economic stimulus package is, is uh, looking at projects that are ready to go to construction within the next six to seven, eight months, a project that hasn't started work yet in design and 
clearing environmental will not be ready in that time frame. Okay, so all those studies are not available. Is that what we're saying for the not for not for the economic stimulus? But we, you know, we have Measure R. We have the call coming up at the beginning of next year, uh, and then we have uh, the possibility of getting it in as an earmark with reauthorization. So those are the the, um, the paths for those kinds of projects. Okay, and then with the list that we have. Uh, and you say if money comes available, then then when do we sit down and figure out the priorities if they give you a smaller lump of money? Is that we're assuming that it looks like right now Chairman Oberstar is the, taking the lead on uh, at least the what the infrastructure portion of the economic stimulus will be. So um, and as I understand, he would be prepared to have some legislation drafted in the next week or two. And in there, we would assume that they'd be talking about amounts of money and criteria for the money. And then we, then we would know. I mean, but the projects that we're sending, they're not prioritized. We're just sending them right. a group. If they give us a lump of money, when does the prioritization uh, we need to sit down with you and, okay, so and, and come back to you with a list and say these are our recommendations on priorities okay. based on the amount of money and the criteria. and. Other factors. Right. Okay, so the, yeah. we get another. So there would be another. Here. Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. It's kind of first blush um, at that. Two. Uh, just another real quick question. Wilshire only bus lane, is that on here? And that's because that's another agenda item we have today. But is yeah. is it on? It's um, it's a longer term, right? It, but yeah, the, the Wilshire, the uh, pavement portion of Wilshire was just about a month outside of this deadline. We're you know Bill Robertson just saw that. Of, of about 20 minutes ago, so we're going to go back see if that can just move up so that the paving portion okay. could move up. But we yeah. got to talk to Bill Roberts. And Bill, would you mind coming up to the table? <laughs> um, and why is doing that? Rec and parks. Yeah. Now, I mean, I see some that are in. You know, is rec and parks is included in here? Is it through Bureau of Engineering? So rec and parks projects are in here as yes. well. And, and a, uh, a lot of the pool projects, like we said, haven't been designed. So that was one of the reasons uh, that they're not on the list. There's okay. the need is there, but uh, we've added a, a few of the po uh, pool projects in. Um, and then uh, if, if for some reason they gave us more time, then we could have the designs done so far. So the real criteria, because Mr. Alicone just joined us, so he'll hear this as well again, the, the six being able to do what in six months? Be Instruct? ready to put a shovel in the ground. Or, shovel in or the ground. Or acquire something. So, so that's really the only criteria that but, we have but again this is just what we've heard people saying there's right. nothing right fixed on that yes. but we hear enough people using it the governor's used it in their discussions the mayor's used it this okay. past week so, so we've used that as the cutoff point so to speak and mr alcom what we're doing today is um we're moving we're if you have any projects that you should let both the, the mayor's office and bureau of engineering that are not included in here let them know um and they'll have some discussion uh, about that it's going to go to rules next uh, week and then to council this is not the final list it's a first draft and starting to get ready um so we're not caught off guard um so uh if there are projects that are not in here today that doesn't mean they won't go forward we just need to you need to look and see what's missing miss robertson since um no disrespect to all the other general managers. Um, you're one of our favorites because you are, are the one that has to do the street repaving and potholes and the public works and that, that we hear most most uh, and alleys. demand. And alleys. And alleys. Oh, forgot alleys. <laughs> the greatest demand, I guess, it, and that people can see the, uh, the you know, um, di direct. Um, yeah, sorry about that. No, I, um, I love know. Bill, too. Okay. Good. <laughs> so, so, Bill, are you, are you happy with this list? Are there projects that are not included in here? Because I can think of a few, Coldwater Canyon, um, others that, you know, are kind of we want to see go forward that are not eligible for Prop A and C monies, et cetera. I think the key thing is in this initial package, as Jim and, and Gary ha have said, because of the very short window, six months, uh, if they say that window is now going to be two years, it's going to open the floodgates. Because, I mean, the city will, will triple what will be available in two years. But as far as the resurfacing, there's about $20 million in resurfacing uh, split up into four geographical areas. The goal of those dollars will be, as you all very well know, to save those streets that we can save. So in other words, if I have a, a C category street, that's going to be the priority with the stimulus money to keep it to fall from a D. Uh, and we'll use that across the board in all the council districts uh, to ensure that we're getting the biggest bang for the dollar uh, and trying to uh, not actually improve, but just maintain our, our current condition. Uh, 
This could easily go, as most of you know, our backlog now is $2.9 billion. Um, and, and my stance on this is all you need to do is cut me the check and I can start tomorrow. So <laughs> that's, that's the key here. We're ready to go. Okay. Great. Mr. Oh, Mr. I just want a quick Levant question for Mr. Bill. Could you, could, uh, and I like crew 152 and 256 and all the crews out there, but if there was a stimulus there, would there be non-city crews doing paving on city streets? like once was done, or would it be only exclusive? The, Did we have in, to hire the employees? The initial cut right here, we would maximize our capability to move very quickly to start the, the funding. At some point in time, depending on the dollars that are available, if that $20 million were to grow to $150 million, yes, we would need additional folks, or we would even have to look at going out and maybe doing some um, contracts for related concrete work or something that would uh, would speed up the process right. the, the uh, my honest opinion is nobody can do it cheaper than i can do it when it comes to the resurfacing portion of portion it. of there's a huge <coughs> element of concrete work that needs to be done in conjunction with a lot of this resurfacing and the last thing right now with your resurfacing is <coughs> a percentage that is private haulers who go to your asphalt plants and their private trucks to haul is that correct Yes. No, yes. What we would do, we yeah. Okay. You're exactly let let right. me just go back to to the public works hat that that we wear here. Um, if you had your way, obviously you just again said 2.9 billion to do all of our streets. It used to be 1.5, then it became 2.3. We're up to to three billion dollars to do our streets. Okay? That's correct. Uh, and the sidewalks, where we always say 80 years to get our sidewalks done, and obviously none of us are going to be around another 80 years for the sidewalks that are in the room here anyhow. Maybe, maybe somebody will, will live to be 200 years old, but, but can't we put a good number of these projects, not $100 million worth, but more? I mean, I don't want to blow us out of the water as a crazy city here, but we have billions of dollars of infrastructure needs, billions, correct? Absolutely. Of, of, of spiking it up a little bit more than, than, than what we've already put in. Yeah, and, and again, the length of this money, how long are they going to give us yeah, right. to spend? If we look at just sidewalks alone, $1.2 billion. Yeah. If we revert back to the mid-70s when we had the old CETA program, the jobs right. creation programs, yeah. That's it. huge benefit. But again, it's going to be critical on what that window is. They're going to give us five years to spend this money, or are they going to say two years, spend it quickly? So I, Yeah, I think, I, I, I think Mr. Steve. Clark put two, two years out there, but, but let, let me just say this. We need to create the real worksheet for the city of Los Angeles, and we need to put it all on that sheet. Uh, and we need to fight. I can tell you Access LA, the Chambers, all these groups in our region are 100%. We sat with uh, Oberstar last year and the year before. They get back there that we have great needs here. And that's why I think this is a golden opportunity for us to, to, to push as hard as we can. And I make an appeal to our governor and our congressional delegation, California first, no longer Republicans and Democrats. Californians first. And if we take that positive energy, which I know we are with Measure R, that was a miracle of coordination and cooperation. We can actually put these projects on the plate and take it back. Right? Okay. And so, Jim, when you refine this as we go through this process here, not only do we want each council office to really visit it, but we want our MTA people and we want all our county people to do it. And frankly, I think the more we put in there with timetables, um, the more successful we'll be in finding. I know from negotiating, you always put the what you really want on one level, what you fight for in another, and you work it out. And I think with this new administration, we need to go, go in with as much coordinated strength as we can, with as much money as we need. Of course, we do. The sewer systems, Gary, I mean, they're about to fall apart all over the, the city. And they need to be more pumped up within the mix of, of the issue there. Okay. Uh, Mr. Alicone? Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Parks. Let me ask, uh, Bill, when you mentioned some of the concrete work in conjunction, what are we referring to, curbs or... Primarily curbs and gutters. Uh, right now, uh, the current program, resurfacing program we have, is very limited in dollars as to addressing some of those issues. Many times we do intermediate or, or interim work and then resurface the street and come back when funding's available to fix uh, a raised uh, gutter or a broken curb. Uh, the way we should be doing it, and if this package came forward, you could do all that concrete work 
then pave the street. That's the way you're supposed to be doing. And then the other thing, when you mentioned the categories, when you said it sees that it doesn't drop to D's, now, is that based on numbers of years of usage or when we think it will deteriorate to a D as well? What we do through our uh, pavement management program, each block, each segment in the city, and there's almost 70,000 segments, individually has a PCI, Pavement Condition Index, and it's ranked from 1 to 100, naturally 100 being a street that we just resurfaced. So we know in each uh, category, and to simplify it, especially for uh, the good folks at the neighborhood councils, we broke it up and said these are A's, these are B's, these are C's, these are D's. These are the fail streets. Our goal is to save those streets so they don't go into that next category. When they go into the next category, they become more expensive to maintain. So it's the old deferred maintenance thing. The longer you wait, the more it's going to cost you. But if we deal with these, we're not going to have any approach on F's or fail streets? As far as uh, again, what we do is we look at, uh, and, and as you very well know, in our current allocation, we take 80% of the money and save those B, C's, and D's. Okay take 20% of the money and put it into repairing those failed streets. And we would do the same thing with this type of dollars. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Alaco, do you have anything? Okay. So you heard from some of the projects listed today, so, you know, you may send an email, but I think... Well, I, I'd just like to get it listed on the committee yeah. report, and we'll get to the information yes. then. So the ones that we've added today that we've talked about um, from each of the areas um, to they fit within that category to add to that as well. And, and the reserve, Wilshire bus. I reserve the right to <laughs> submit my uh, requests uh, in, in between. Now uh, and Friday. Now and Friday. <laughs> yes. Just for the record, can we say it was the two ones that were mentioned from CD12, which were the, uh, was a. Balboa San Fernando Road Improvements. And then an easement on the gas station, or was that a second? Uh, there's three of them on, there were three of them in that project, and we'll, we'll define those, the third one. Okay. And then there were two from CD11, the Venice and Mar Vista pools you wanted to yeah, that's right. add, and, and, and then the Wilshire bus only lane, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I know Mr. Parks wants to say something, but I also want to make sure the green line isn't completely dished anywhere on this, but is somewhat in the resurrected package, which I was told from the MTA issue of Measure R it would be. And whatever federal comp we can get out of that as we go sure. forward, I want to make sure the green line happens. And I also think we should have a strategic effort through the mayor's office, the council office who have relations with the congressional representatives once we get our package right to go home, visit yeah. them, to say hello to them, to thank them and try to get them to be part of the team. And also, Jim, I did sketch a uh, cover for your report. We have a bridge to somewhere, L.A., with the city seal and the <laughs> map. <somewhere>. Okay. Uh, <laughs> thank you. I'll take that. We'll take it. Thank you. I'm I won't comment on the drawing ability there. Um, we do have some public comment cards, so if you would you mind um, exit? Oh, okay. yes, you want to ask a question before we take some public comment? Yeah, Mr. Clark, I know. I know. Let, let me ask you: uh, When we list these as MTA, have they bought off on these because they don't meet? They, these are ones month? that we received from MTA. From them. From them. Yes. Okay, thank you. I just want to make sure, Mr. Clark, that what you heard what Mr. Labonge just said. I want the congressional delegation of L.A. County because of Measure R, together in a room. And if our mayor needs to organize that or the supervisors need to do it, once we come up with our list that we all feel comfortable with, we want to sit with our congressional delegation and tighten them up so that they push together as a team, Republicans yes, and Democrats. We'll do that both in D.C. and we will do it with their district staffs as well here so that they're aware of what our priorities are. Great. And we'll Great. share the list with them. Great. We would do that. Uh, thank you. Um, and uh, Mr. Maybe you and I can send out an email to all of our colleagues asking yes. them to submit. We need it by we'll it. Friday a.m. Friday a.m. Yeah, so Friday a.m. We're getting close to Christmas. We want to fill that tree. Okay. Great. Uh, so we have the following people. George Wolfberg, Damian Newton, Arnold Sachs, and Joe Linton are the first four. Thanks, George. Okay. They could all come to the table. George? Good afternoon. Uh, I'm a member of the Pacific Palisades Community Council, and one of the hats that I have worn uh, is the chair of the Street Repair Committee. Where we went around, we, got, we have elected people from various districts. They gave us their input. We went around, we checked all the streets, and found that... Uh, there was a priority, and obviously it wasn't not only funds, it was the fact that there are a lot of D and F streets that don't get done. We understand the triage. So we're 
I want to be here to second everything that's been said about writing the biggest possible check to street services. <laughs> yes. Uh, I have a little handout there that uh, Mr. I gave to Mr. Rosendahl. I'm sorry, I only have one copy, but it's... He'll a, make sure we'll get a copy it, of it. It is a, uh, some photographs of a street that's a critical street to walk your child to school where because the, the gutter, you know, this is concrete, there's no gutter. If you cannot walk side by side with your child, if you do, that child will be left behind. So we need to not leave our children behind. We've got to uh, do the concrete work and repair yeah, we're the We're going to put this right, into you. our stimulus package commitment and make that commitment well, to you today. And thank you for your leadership up in the Palisades and on the west side. But we will submit this officially as part of the package. Thanks, George. We'll just go to Joe because you're sitting right next to him. <laughs> well, uh, uh, having less than two minutes to actually have read this list, it's, uh, I'm glad to have seen it. But um, uh, the, the main things I'd like to push for is um, the, the whole green jobs aspect, I would really look at, really urge you to include, uh, as Councilman Rosendahl and all of you are aware, um, that uh, bike projects, Sally River Bikeway, um, are uh, you know par part of the green economy, and and I, I would urge you to uh, to really make sure that we take a balanced approach that that doesn't um, that, that gives Angelinos various options for getting around, not not just car investments. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Joe. Oh, Damien, sorry. followed by Arnold Sachs, and if you wouldn't mind, uh, George and Joe, to call some other people up if you'd you know. Exit those seats for us. Thank you. <laughs> Dorothy Lay and Colleen uh, Mason Heller. Um, I think probably everybody but Councilman Smith knows a lot of what I'm going to say with, before I say it. So uh, instead of trying to focus on the argument of going into specific bike pedestrian transit projects that are available, I think, what, I mean, I only had a couple minutes to look at the list, too. I couldn't find it on the website before I got here. I'm sure it'll be up later today or tomorrow morning. But uh, my concern is that when you listen to Barack Obama talk about transportation, you listen to Joe Biden talk about transportation, they talk about reinvesting in urban areas, and they talk about green technology. They're both transit riders. Well, I don't know if you count Amtrak as transit, but they're both train riders. I object to that thing. They're both, you know, bus riders. No, I didn't mean that. I just meant because it's a longer distance. It's not urban trains. But, um, and when I was looking through the list, a lot of the projects that I saw, and I didn't get all the way through, weren't focused in that area. They were focused on sort of the standard projects. And I think when you're competing with other cities, what's going to stand out to them are going to be those green transportation projects. And in some cases, I think there's a value in getting the people more involved that are out there on the streets and the, the regular populace that don't necessarily come to council meetings, because there's green transportation projects that people might not even think of as existing. For example, repaving 4th Street. I know Councilman Labange knows about this because he's ridden, I've ridden on 4th Street with him. It's an unofficial major, I mean, it's, it's a bike lane or a bike path, I think they call it. It's a bike path, but it's a major bike path in the city. I bet that's the highest ratio of bikes to cars of any street in the city. It's the unofficial bike boulevard. A repaving project for 4th Street that lists that, I bet would have a much higher chance of getting funded than a regular repaving projects and it's not something that unless you rode the street regularly uh, someone that's at DOT or someone that's putting this list together might know so I think getting us more involved that are on the street to let you help inform what those green transportation projects are and getting more of them in there is going to get the city a much larger share of the pie thank you, thank you. Arnold. yes thank you Arnold Sachs um, just to review you started off this conversation by stating there was a previous stimulus package that would have been authorized after the, um, in the late 90s, early 90s? How, what were the results of that stimulus package? And what were the results of those projects? Any idea? You know, we had a 2001 long-range plan for the MTA. We have a 2008 long-range plan for the MTA that's not been a approved yet, even though they were waited until Measure R was to find out the outcome of Measure R. But we don't know what the status is of the 2001 long-range plan project in relation to the 2008 long-range plan plan project. Are we just repeating ourselves? Um, there was a question regarding we're not going to fight over money between departments versus districts. At what point in, the, in this conversation are you going to fight over money versus departments versus districts? There was state, county, city, pass through. You're going to fight over state, county, city. Um, there were three authorizations for the stimulus package, uh, three amounts listed. 
there's a pretty big ballpark between the three numbers. Um, there's three sources of income right now for the city. Prop 1B, half cent sales tax measure R, and now this economic stimulus package. How much of this is going to be repetitious? Um, you have a street ranking for maintenance. Can you get the same kind of ranking for the ads? Just to throw that one in there. And then finally, this list of projects from the mayor's office. It states here, project cost total was not added to this report because many projects appear in more than one council district, and thus the sum of the projects listed would misrepresent the total cost of the project list. That's two different things because the projects are listed in each council district. So if there's a project in council district 2, 4, and 8, it's listed under each project as the 2, 4, and 8. But the cost is listed the same. Now, if you're going to have a project in council district 2, who's going to get the money if it, it extends to 2, 4, and 8? There's a big difference. And if you're listing all those projects, or if you're listing one project through, I, I appreciate the time, but if you're listing more a project through numerous district, then it should be addressed as going through numerous district and not listed under each district. Okay. It's Thank unfair you. to the population. Thank you. Um, I, Dorothy um, and Colleen will ask Damian Goodman and Stephanie Taylor to please come up. Okay. Um, just wanted to emphasize that Your name for the record. Dorothy Le from Los Angeles County Bicycle Coalition. Um, the, we do have a really great opportunity, especially with the new administration, with increased um, environmental awareness and increased awareness of um, transportation issues um, that really for Los Angeles to, yeah, tap water, <laughs> that's really great. Um, it's really cute that you have the bottle in front too. Um, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Very good. <laughs> um, anyways, so like tap water issues, um, just really encouraging. Um, really emphasizing the bike and pedestrian uh, projects. I know that you're trying to make your list as big as possible, robust as possible. If there's any way you can, as the city of LA, emphasize the projects that are greenest um, and, and really say that those ones that are the ones that you want to do, that would really let, let op, um, LA take a stand and really show that LA is trying to make an effort to um, go beyond, um, beyond cars. So. You, I saw on the list LA River Path, which is great, the San Fernando Road project, um, extending the beach bike path um, um, on the west side to LA City limits, and the Royal Seco bike path, um, and even promoting um, all the bike infrastructure that's in the current bike master plan, really looking at that, the one that's already approved, the one that, the projects that um, are ready to go, that would be really great. Thank you. Colleen, followed by, and is Damien still here? No, okay. Maybe not here yet. My name is Colleen Mason Heller. I'm representing Neighbors for Smart Rail and the Cheviot Hills Homeowners Association. I'm here today to encourage the Transportation Committee and the Public Works Committee to keep the funding for additional grade separations uh, that I noticed that you've already put on the list as a priority uh, for the Federal Infrastructure Stimulus Program um, outlined by President-elect Obama. We have an extraordinary opportunity to influence infrastructure priorities now that will benefit our region for the foreseeable future. We need to stop looking at light rail as a social experiment in this city. If the commitment is there to build it, then that commitment needs to be supported by the protections that make it safe for pedestrians, that make it an improvement to traffic flow, not an impediment, and that enhance communities, not put them at risk for lasting, unmitigable environmental impacts. It has been shown by the 91 deaths and the over 820 accidents on the Blue Line and 101 fatalities and countless accidents on Metrolink that there is no more pressing transportation need than rail safety in this city. Amen. The increased level of safety, travel time savings, and traffic improvements that additional grade separations provide make this an investment well worth making. Please help make this project, a project that Angelinos can be proud of for the next hundred years by adding the security of additional grade separations to the Expo light rail. If there is money to achieve this, then we're obligated to pursue it and enough of it to make a real difference. When it comes to trains, good enough isn't. That's right. there, we owe it to the taxpayers who will live and die by this project. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I want Thank you to you. know I put a motion in uh, for my district when the Expo line that it cannot be at grade. It has to be grade separation. Thank you. It's period. much appreciated, yeah. sir. Thank you. And are you okay with the, the rail line going through Cheviot Hills? 
Am I okay with it? Uh-huh. On a scale of what, one to a hundred? No, that's the <laughs> land we own now. I think it's a project that has to be examined uh, by virtue of all of the environmental impacts on all the routes that are currently under investigation in the EIR. I think just an equitable examination. If they don't choose that line, should they subdivide the land and sell the land? I'm sorry, should they? Yeah, the MTA. Well, if, if they're we not going go to use it for Expo, they certainly should, or they need to look at mixed-use development. I mean, there are a lot of options. I think that we can't really speak to that until the environmental impact report, the DEIR, comes out. Thank you. Uh-huh. Good afternoon. I'm Stephanie Taylor representing the Green LA Coalition. And I just have a question, really. It's to clarify the timeline and the process that I know this is the first draft and whether the community would have the um, ability to put some projects forward for consideration and what that process would be. I think some of our members of Green LA especially um, are thinking about green infrastructure projects and would like an opportunity to put some projects forward. And I'm not just not sure like what the timing and what's the correct process to do that the, the 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 process is that it will go to rules committee on Monday and then to the council next week on, on Wednesday we don't have any criteria by the Congress yet so it'll be dependent upon that um, so I think there is time for additional projects the one criteria that we you know are pretty certain about it's projects that are ready to go in six months so if there are projects that you believe in each of these districts are not you know have been designed are just waiting for funding other kinds of things like that then we would welcome your input on that it's an it's an evolving document right so like soon that would have to happen like soon I mean added. soon and as we're going forward with the list okay. now but I, I believe that again it yeah. I don't anticipate it being before February that um, the Congress is going to take any action until okay. there's a new president okay. all that so all right. um, I think there'll be there's a little bit of time but we don't want to wait till then to prepare right. it. okay thank you thank you very much thanks for coming so, uh, colleagues, that item is now before us. Um, I am assuming it's, it's uh, unanimous moving it forward to the Rules Committee with yeah. the amendments that you have made, um, Madam CLA. Right. We'll amend the, re the uh, list as um, identified by the committee, adding those projects, and then I would recommend that you um, direct the CLA to prepare a, an official city position resolution for consideration by the Rules Great. Committee. Great. Okay. Colleague, we've had an, a request, so that will go forward. We've, um, so thank you to the... Um, Public Works Committee, um, you may stay, Mr. Smith, as long as you would like um, to our next items. We're going to go to item number six, which is the Wilshire, Bo Wilshire Boulevard bus lane project, because I know MTA uh, potentially has some people that have to leave. Okay, item number six is DOT report relative to the status report on Wilshire Boulevard bus only lane. So DOT and MTA, we can split you up, you know, you can... <laughs> Who'd like to begin? Uh, good afternoon. Uh, Kang Hu with LADOT. Sorry. I was just saying good job to Jim Clark. All right. Thank you. Okay. All right. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, two months ago, we reported to the T committee about the status of the Wilshire Boulevard bus lane, um, and we've made some good progress. Um, on November 3rd, MTA sent the city a letter authorizing the city to incur project development costs. Uh, in other words, we can uh, submit the request for reimbursement for all eligible costs uh, related to Wilshire Boulevard bus plan project. And also, we have uh, started a public outreach effort. Uh, four workshops have been conducted in November, um, and I let uh, MTA uh, staff talk about the workshop. Um, they are the lead agency for environmental assessment. It is on schedule to complete <coughs> The environmental assessment in July 2009. Uh, with that, I turn over to uh, Brad in MTA to talk about the environmental assessment. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm Brad McAllister, Executive Officer of Long Range Planning at Metro, and I'm pleased to let you know we are on schedule. We've uh, all of us up at the table have worked very, very hard to stay on schedule, and we have had four community meetings in early November all along the Wilshire corridor. We had. About 150 uh, people come and speak, or come to attend. We had 60 of those spoke, and about two thirds of those who spoke expressed support for the project, and uh, one third had concerns or, or opposition to the project. Uh, we're really pleased to hear what we're hearing now because I think it helps us as we move forward completing the initial assessment, um, the environmental assessment, and initial study work that we're currently doing. And uh, we'll be, be doing another round of community meetings about March. 
So uh, we've been working with our consultant team as well, and they're busy uh, doing the technical work that we need to have done at this point. So uh, we are on schedule with our effort and uh, making progress every day. I might day. say, Madam Chair, I went to the one in my district. It was great. And they had a lot of good visuals, a good community turnout, and did a great job of getting community input. And, and so the, um, tell me the, the timeline specifically as to where we're going. And, and of course, as it relates, now we're talking about potential funding from the federal government. Right. We're, uh, uh, we have the potential of the very small start grant program funding available to us as we uh, proceed. Uh, we uh, are doing the technical work with our consultants now so that to prepare us for a second round of community meetings about March. Uh, we'll be uh, making a recommendation regarding the environmental assessment initial study around around June, and, and this will help us. You know, one of the decisions is uh, whether we can do a NIGDAC or whether we have to do an, a full-blown EIR. And, and so um, all that we're doing now is the technical work that helps us to make that decision. Uh, we hope to stay on schedule for June, and, and we're on schedule for June. So start construction in June? Start work in June? Uh, What's the... We would be uh, completing the study and having the environmental certified. We'd need to go to FTA and get their approval, but shortly thereafter, we would hope that we'd be able to start construction. Yeah, if everything goes smoothly and also receive the approval from FTA, then the first construction element would be the street um, repair on Worship Boulevard between Western and Fairfax. Okay. And if everything goes smoothly, uh, we can possibly start the reconstruction of the payments August or uh, okay. October next year. And if there are any things that, empty, you know, that can go on parallel tracks, I mean, I know some are required for a hearing and so forth, but I just really, you know, we, we really want to push this forward. And it's, as you know, we're going to nudge you as much as everyone else nudges us back. So well, we, we appreciate that. And uh, we, we keep looking at the schedule. We've looked to have everything going on parallel tracks okay. as much as we possibly can. We keep looking if there's anything we missed. Uh, but we think we have everything moving as quick as we possibly can. We've shortened review of documents, and um, you know we'll we'll, we'll uh, continue to do that as we go through the process. So okay. appreciate great appreciate and, and we'll we'll probably keep this kind of on our our list so you guys can come and give us periodic updates. And again, if there's anything that that happens that we can have an impact on, um, whether to you know push our own department or to push you, but vice versa, um, let us know because we really want to see it moving. So. Thank you. We do have one public comment card, Mr. Yeah. Sachs, so if one of you would give your, oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Parks. Let me just ask, when we look at the figure that, uh, that we can start uh, incurring costs, is the 22 million approved? Is it the, the max? Is it the floor, the ceiling? Or are we talking about getting a portion of the 22 million? The 22 million dollar is, the grant that a city will receive. So that's for the that 22 million is what we're going after. Uh, that is already been approved by okay. the very small star grant from M uh, from Federal Transit Administration. Okay, so it's been approved. So that's the minimum we can expect. Correct. Okay, thank you. And, and maybe just to also answer, we still have to be in the uh, federal budget so there's it's been approved by FTA we're on their list and mm -hmm. uh, we still need action to be approved by the next federal budget and that's being held up because of the okay. election what, what is the amount that you we agree that they can incur before that approval they are eligible to incur that that full amount and uh, they're are eligible to be reimbursed when the, the federal government approves it so they have kind of pre-award authority to to start so, working we now. say when not if I'm sorry. You're saying when they have they have pre-award authority to to incur costs now for that 22 million. Okay. I just want to make sure August is the maybe the construction start. When will it be finished? It depends on how Bureau of Street Services. Uh, yeah, let's just say we get everybody, all the stars lined up, everything happens. When will we have that Wilshire bus lane done? Uh, the initial schedule calls for, I believe, is the uh, end of. Yeah, uh, July 2011. Yeah. Because we also have some uh, street winding elements to this project. We get it done by then. Mm -hmm. As long as that is a long time from now, at least it will be done. Don't backslide on that day. Promise me. 
And if you think you're going to backslide, let us know so we can do whatever we need to do so it doesn't fall into an abyss. Well, there, there are certain elements that we could open by 2011 that would not require the street widening. So. Yeah. Well, my goal is it, it, it's 2009, that's a whole year. 2010 is a whole year. Uh, and 2011, if we do it by halfway, is two and a half years. It's not rocket scientists. We've got to get it done. I mean, these others are a little more complicated, like mm -hmm. subway to the sea and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. but this is no big deal. So whatever I need to do or the city has to do, we mm -hmm. want to do it. Okay? That, that's just the urgency of, of that. Yeah, we will continue to report to you the status of the and project. If there's any challenge or problems, we will certainly bring to your attention. Yeah, and I, and I really believe the economic stimulus package can help as well in moving it even further down. Yes. Thank you. Mr. Sachs. Well, if one of you would give up your seat, that'd be great. You, you kind of stole my thunder there because I was going to ask. Um, it's all, you're fast approaching 100 years, the city of LA, on improving Wilshire Boulevard. And so uh, I was wondering if you'd start to consider what kind of celebration you're going to plan because the two points will intersect sooner than you think because the city and the county have beat this horse to death. They've used every bit of it, including the clip and the clop. Thank you, Mr. Sachs. Um, I think the action that uh, we're going to take on this is to receive and file and report back. It says 90 days, but I'd actually like 60 days. Great. I second it, 60 days. We'll know a little more after the first of the year. Thank you. We'll go back to item number five. Item number five is the DOT, uh, DOT reports in response to a grower rules and all motion relative to the development of a plan for programming the funds for Measure R. My name is Michael Weno. I'm with the Department of Transportation. Ken Husting, LADOT. Uh, I guess the, the final decision on Measure R was made last week sometime. Thank God. <laughs> uh, and so um, we, we have three recommendations that we're asking Council to approve. Direct the department as lead agency to work with Metro on their guidelines. They're developing guidelines for how to distribute the funds. We're asking that uh, you direct the department as lead agency to work with CLA, CAO, and interested departments on how to uh, decide how the city is going to, s to allocate these funds within the city, the local return funds, and then direct the department to report back in 90 days on the status of these items. Um, and I think, you know, uh, we're very happy that Measure R passed, but what I heard often as I went out to advocate, um, uh, people say we want to make sure it goes for the, you know, it starts right away and goes for the projects that were identified and to do it quickly. So I think we are credibility and moving forward and, and again those are items we just want to move as quickly as we can so. just curious um, Dennis Zane you know Dennis Zane I've heard of him yes has, has he been interacting with you guys yet Denny, yeah. no, no. Zane. please reach out to him uh, what we need to do is start things and certain things quicker than others and others a little later so we maximize what we get out of measure R He's talking to the mayor, he's talking to Supervisor Yaroslavsky, he's talking to Michael Fuhr, and I think it would be a good thing for you to call Dennis Zane to come in and, and get his insight as to how we prioritize Metro R. Okay. We do have two, I don't know if they have any questions, Mr. Parks? Yes. Mr. <coughs> um, Dorothy Lay and Arnold Sachs. I just Dorothy. Have, yeah. okay. Hi, Dorothy from Los Angeles County Bicycle Coalition. Just wanted to remind everyone that um, when we went to, when we were talking about Measure R with um, Metro and uh, when they were lobbying to get it passed, things like that, um, I remember the mayor saying um, that he, he wanted to get the city to prioritize bike projects for the local return of Measure R since it didn't um, get a sort of a line item. It wasn't... Um, there wasn't a specific allocation for non-motorized transportation in Measure R. 
um, because um, people said that it would go under local return. So just reminding you all that measure, um, the city really needs to prioritize biking and pedestrian projects for that local return. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Sachs. Yes, thank you very much. Um, when Measure R passed, at this County Board of Supervisors meeting on Tuesday, I happened to mention to them that um, prior to Measure R, there was a State Bill 314, the Murray Bill, created in 2003, which had a, gave the authority to place a half cent sales tax on the ballot for six and a half years to fund specific projects and programs. This um, information from LADOT lists 11 projects. Seven of the projects would have been funded under State Bill 314. Now, what the new Measure R mostly does is eliminates a time frame for the projects to be done in. You have seven projects listed here that would have been funded with a time frame. What guarantee do we have that the funding for Measure R for the, that the city's going to get, if they could do those seven projects, would they meet that time frame? That's a real concern. Because as we know, every penny that comes in from the public needs to be accounted for. Where it goes, goes to hell. This is put out by the MTA. What is Measure R? And it has a nice pie chart here. It shows how they're going to expend. But it also has a little asterisk up at the top. And then down here at the bottom it says, after administrative costs. You'd be lucky to get a driveway. We need to know what's going to happen with the funding. And with this funding, and back to the first agenda item, if I might, the jobs that will be created, there was somebody who spoke at the expo line regarding jobs on the expo line. There's a difference between jobs in the community and community jobs. We need to have some kind of guarantee that the jobs that are created, a proportion of them, will go to the people who live in that community and not people that are imported into the community to do the work. Thank because you. it's just an economic hardship Thank for you, people Mr. to Sachs. see other people Appreciate take it. money out of their hands. Thank you, Mr. Sachs. Uh, that item is now uh, before us. Um, Madam Clerk, uh, the action would be to report back in 90 days with an initial plan for the allocation. And approve the DOT recommendations. Yes. Yeah. Next item. Thanks, Mike. Item seven is a DOT report relative to the scope of work to be addressed in the request for proposals for the Studio City parking structure. And, and maybe before I have your presentation, I'd, I'd like to actually hear from Todd Royal. Todd, is Todd here? Todd Royal. Okay. Go ahead. Going once, going twice. Yeah. Good afternoon, uh, Council Members. Amir Sadati, Assistant General Manager, LADOT. I am pleased uh, to introduce, and um, to my left is uh, Ali Madavi, who's the new principal engineer um, in charge of the uh, new Office of uh, Parking Regulations and Facilities. <laughs> We love he's, you. He's, uh, he will be taking over the responsibilities of the on-street, the off-streets, and the whole permits program, preferential parking, overnight parking. Did you tell him what the job was really like, Amir? Um, As we just raised parking goal. rates? He's yeah. He's, he, signed, he, signed the, he signed the line uh, knowing full well the responsibilities that lies with him, within him. He's a 26-year veteran with the city and um, very lucky to have him, and thank you for uh, the opportunity to hire uh, this position. So with that, I'd like to just give you a quick um, report on item seven as we came to you uh, as part of the request of council looking at some of our underutilized parking structures. Uh, we reported that one of, uh, specifically one of the lots that was really being underutilized and underperforming was the Studio City parking structure. And we've uh, attempted many efforts to try to get the uh, utilization up, uh, marketing brochures, uh, wayfinding signage, advertising local magazines, um, and also developing a coordinated on and off street uh, pricing strategy. 
Um, however, it's still not performing as well as it should, and through the uh, past few months, there's been discussion on potentially a request for proposal that could be sent out on um, alternate better uses of part, part, partially um, using this studio city parking structure for other alternative green uses. So we're reaching out, and today what we have before you is the request to uh, approve the attached scope of work that's before you and um, authorize the general manager to release the request for proposal for a green environmentally friendly alternative use for the studio parking structure and um, and, and come back I, I guess to you or right now it, it asks us to authorize a, a, a negotiate and execute a contract but we can come back if, if so amended. Um, just, just two things. One is um, I know recently um, with the uh, increase in the parking uh, meters on Ventura Boulevard and had some additional conversations with some of the business owners and they are uh, interested in potentially some uh, negotiation as to monthly passes, different things that they might be able to do that would give us some additional money. Um, we, we tried that a few years ago. They seem willing to look at that um, and hopefully DOT can be flexible as well. I think even with that um, uh, we still probably will have underutilized at this point and um, people are still changing their their behaviors there as to where they park and I park in it frequently and walk across the street it's not a problem but not everyone has gotten into that uh, to to do that um, it will ultimately be cheaper to park in that parking lot than it will in the meters and hopefully we'll see some some change in that but if I can you know I know the department has worked with my staff Evan Roosevelt but hopefully we will also do that I see his shaking heads in the back so we're we had, they had a meeting on Friday with the bid and the chamber representatives so um, and the mayor's office, actually, as as well. Um, so what we would be be doing, and I think what it had talked about is really the rooftop, which rarely people go up to that rooftop, is to um, that you go. We don't have to see the RFP. Go out to the RFP, but then just come back for the bids and and be able to do that quickly. And I, you know, guarantee that we'll do that very quickly to see what the opportunities are going forward. Okay. I just want to welcome you aboard. I yeah. think it's a great addition. A lot more successful in getting that gold out of the gutter with, with you uh, focusing on that. <laughs> I think I'm going to give him a sign, gold in the gutter, with it. It's going to work <laughs> with some money underneath it. So. <laughs> Any other questions, colleagues? If not, okay. Um, that will be the order. Thank you very much and welcome as well. So we'll approve the DOT recommendations with the amendment to delete number three. Correct. Item number eight. Item number eight is a DOT report relative to the parking meter technology program update. Thank you again. Um, item 8, Parking Meter Technology Program Update. I'm being joined here with uh, Dan Mitchell, our senior transportation engineer uh, in charge of the program. And this is a report back on the status of uh, a lot of uh, programs that we have uh, begun um, since December of 2007. And we're happy to report to you that the off-street component, all of the 30-meter parking lots um, have the new park and pay stations. Th those were done on schedule. And we've seen um, revenue increases of about 19%. The <laughs> That's all, Dan. Um, the on-street pay station installations uh, as you recall, there was a component for off-street and on-street, and the on-street component are 84% complete, and we're um, targeting the end of this month, um, hopefully, to finish that. We are on schedule. There are a, a few technicalities that we're working out, and the holidays coming, and, and staff are taking some time off. So we're gonna we're gonna we're on schedule to do that, and we will um, uh, hopefully complete that task. And what we've seen. Um, within the um, 40,000 metered spaces, we went back and um, changed 15% as a pilot extension of our pilot program. And as a part of last year's budget, uh, when the rates and hours were changed, the city council also gave us the ability in those high areas, like in downtown, where it was going to go from, you know, two dollars to three or four dollars, to be able to use the new technology that accepts credit cards. Um, for the public so they don't have to take rolls and rolls of quarters. So uh, the additional um, two and a half or three percent are part of this particular on-street pay station program. Uh, DOT as part of this uh, park and pay did a, a, a huge public outreach program and we uh, have a few things here that we want to show you. 
Uh, first and foremost, we created a, a, a pamphlet and a brochure that my staff went door to door to all the businesses that, uh, why don't you pass some uh, out there? Uh, we went door to door and provided those to the businesses. We worked with the chambers, uh, the business improvement districts, and provided that, and also, obviously those were also on our website. Uh, in addition to that, when the new pay stations went in, we provided uh, this bag on the existing single space meters to also educate the public there is a change coming. Note your space number and pay at pay station. And we left these um, bags on sometimes two to three weeks to again get the public to understand the change. In addition, traffic officers were used as traffic ambassadors and which was a, a very successful program. And they, uh, the men and women of our uh, enforcement were up and down uh, the streets where these new equipment were installed and they assisted the public on how to use the equipment. Uh, it was very successful in, in, in public looking at our officers in another way, not just they're there to ticket them. So it was a win-win, the public liked that. How in long do they do that for? Um, most places, two days, some areas, two to th three days. In addition to that, we gave a grace period, um, so no citations were issued, again, because there was a change in, in technology or signs or, you know, so that wasn't something that was publicly um, addressed, but as a department, we also did that um, as a courtesy. In addition, my staff provided um, routine updates, maps to all the council offices and asked their assistance in letting their communities, their stakeholders, their um, um, neighborhood councils to also be aware of it because uh, this is a huge undertaking especially with you know the rates and the hours um, so what we're um, having our report also for you is uh, the on street uh, as I mentioned for the pay stations were 84 percent complete the uh, on street meters and rates uh, that is at 80 percent complete and we hope to have all of that again is on schedule to complete that. There's a few areas that are going to now be changed out in um, January and we're working with those council offices to provide them that information. Um, some of the uh, early pay station pilot results that are uh, noteworthy to mention. Um, majority of the surveys that we've done either through traffic officers, through uh, our staff being out there going door to door, uh, the public's acceptance of these new technologies about 92 to 93 percent. Of course, change is hard, and recently with the additional rate increase and the additional extension of hours, that's something that the public's not too happy about. They're not compa complaining about the technology or the ease of, the ease of use of the technology, but they're just a little upset about the, you know, the policy of, of changing rates and hours. Let me interact on that point because I've been getting a lot of it, obviously. Um, um, when it was a quarter in a given meter, I've gotten calls that in a particular meter where it was a quarter, it's gone up to 75 cents, three quarters. Is that what, how did we determine which one went from a quarter to what? Um, as you recall, Council Member, as part of the budget, the, uh, the mayor's office provided a, um, a direction that um, we haven't had meters changed in almost 20 years. We had the lowest rates in the nation and um, other cities. So the policy was anything that was 25 cents or less went to a dollar minimum, and anything from 75 cents and up would have been doubled. And that was, was, was what was discussed for many months through budget and finance as well as the council, and, and that's how it was decided that looking at other cities' rates, looking at in that same time frame of 20 years, inflation has gone up 80 percent. I'm, I'm the gold in the gutter guy, so you, you don't have any problem with me. I sold you but, already. But, but the 25 cent one, we, the decision was anything that was 25 cents went to a buck. That is correct. Okay. That is correct. And, and then anything that was uh, 75 cents, did you And say? higher went to uh, um, double, basically. So 75 cents went to $1.50, a dollar went to two. Right. And did two we go beyond two? two? In any of the cities? Yeah, downtown has some areas that are currently at four dollars an hour. Four bucks. Okay. If you have, if you seen um, a lot more, I mean, did we have any places where there were credit cards before? 
in our off street lots we had three machines uh, that were that were um, taking credit cards but nothing on street and that's so the other thing that is a, is a one of the early pay station results we're seeing um, an average of about 40% of credit card use some areas is as high as 80% some areas are a little bit lower but um, so, so that's a good news uh, for us and um, uh, pay by sell has not quite caught on yet um, some people that really are a little bit more tech uh, or um, tech savvy are using it and I think that just needs um, more um, advertising and the more meters we have and the more people understand it then I think that will uh, the benefit of using your cell phone to pay for it will, will also come come back the other good thing um, that we can report to you is during uh, the time that we've installed this new technology the uptime have been about 99 percent so the meters reliability uh, against vandalism and other things are are, are um, are better um, doesn't mean they're not being vandalized you know people are still upset and they try to do that but again by these units having the ability to tell you real time I'm broken come and fix me we've gotten there much faster and quicker to fix the the meters um, you know, I'm very proud of everything you guys have been done a great job but the, there is an issue for me about equity throughout the city in areas that have no meters. And this, this isn't the right forum to, to, to ask you to report back, but we brought it up in the budget process, brought it up in other processes. There are some colleagues of mine who welcome meters and have for years, but there aren't any. Uh, some of us don't want meters, obviously. But we need to do a survey of the whole city where the situations are, where there are business districts, where there aren't meters and at least raise that issue for the political consideration so all boats could rise together. There's a significant, in my opinion, opportunity if we put more meters in more spots. Having said that, I've also said that in my district where I have a lot of meters all over the place and they've robbed my, that fund that was supposed to make parking lots and stuff for the general treasury needs, that any new meters I'm going to be putting in, I'm going to want to negotiate a piece that goes to those communities for various uh, you know, improvements on those blocks and so on. And the short answer to that is we have done some surveys. There are about approximately 3,000 new meters in um, different districts, and some of that includes uh, Council Member Smith's district, um, are on the queue. You know, we just have the same amount of meter technicians, and I'm really down three people. We're, we're working with the mayor's office and the CAO on trying to get the exemption to get to hire those people. So we have that aggressive schedule to change the hours, bring in the new um, pay stations, uh, fix the old ones, and so we're, the next thing on the block in January, February is now let's go back and do some of those new areas to generate the new revenue that has, wasn't there before. So uh, we, we hear you um, and we're, we're working diligently towards that. The other um, item was we're also branding the, the logos here. Um, park and pay logos that we like that these same logos and shapes are used on the machines on the brochures on our website and we're trying to get the people here in Los Angeles to identify this and this these will become wayfinding signs and better signs so to our lots as you mentioned throughout the city so um, I just wanted to bring this for you and every, all of the information is also on our website which uh, our staff have done a good job in getting that um, now a few next steps for you we are working di diligently as we speak uh, on the parking technology RFP as we mentioned we're we're going to do this pilot program bring in these new equipments uh, learn from them and put the information into a competitive bid process for the entire city I'm also happy to um, introduce Jerry Greenwald who's in the back there who's our um, former city employee we brought back to help us with that process Great. Uh, and he's been on board for a week and he hasn't quit yet so we're, we're happy to have <laughs> we him. We expect miracles from you Jerry. So. That's right, Jerry. Um, yeah. And we're uh, working diligently again to try to get that out by the end of January there's a lot of um, complexities in that and, and um, but we're w diligently working through that and if there are any delays we'll make sure that everybody knows and we'll, we'll communicate that to the the, to all of you. Um, also, in addition, we've done some real good um, uh, analysis of what all these changes mean. We've, we've used some of those uh, vehicle sensing technology and the street line technology to measure 
what the demand and behavior was before we put in the new stations. Now we're, we're measuring how that changed behavior with the new pay stations and also measure, the, again, the public's behavior after the rates and hours have changed so that we can report that. And that we're doing that in Hollywood and uh, Studio City and downtown. In addition, in downtown, we're also doing a test with the CRA in a Wi-Fi mode. So we're kind of looking ahead. Uh, and all of these components are things that we like or we're going to be part of an RFP because that's where the future is. We're not going to um, plan something that we're going to go buy 40,000 of something and that's it. We're, we're really looking at the future potential technologies, benefits to the public, um, and obviously the benefits to the city and, and revenue is going to be a key component of that. With that, I also like to mention about the Downtown Intelligent Parking Management Program, which is a program the, the city put in with MTA and Caltrans as part of the congestion pricing component. Um, there is a um, grant of $15 million that we're going to come back to the city council for full approval, um, and there will be a $3 million um, local match for that and that demonstration project along with the congestion pricing or the tolling on the Harbor Freeway would do um, what's called the dynamic parking pricing. So in essence we're measuring the behavior uh, of demand based on market based pricing. So we're trying to achieve an 85 percent occupancy by uh, changing the rates up. So as, as demand drops, so will the parking meter rates. As demand goes up, so would the parking meter rates. As part of that, we're going to have informational system with um, um, guide signs and information within the parking to help people understand where and how many parking spaces are available so they can make a decision based on the route so they're not um, continuously uh, cruising and congest, you know, creating more congestion and air pollution. So. Um, those are a few things that we're doing. I'm happy to answer any questions you have. Uh, we said we're going to do this by the end of December. Um, we're very, 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 very close. And uh, early results, we're happy to say, are, um, are really good. And, we're, and we've learned a lot. There has been, obviously, kinks on the way. Um, but I'm, I'm very happy that, as a council and mayor, you guys gave us the opportunity to do this, because I think it's the right way to do it and now we'll be in a much better place for the, the future parking program for LA. And we're looking forward to that citywide uh, part of this um, and the miracles that are going to be performed. So I think we're going to ask you to come back in 60 days. We'll receive and file and get a status report in 60 days. Congratulations. You've done Thank a you. great job. Thank you. It's my staff. <laughs> you and your staff. Thank you. It really moved quickly on that. I appreciate it. I know there were some glitches, but it moved. Last item, item number nine. Item number nine is Grillsmith motion relative to the development of a menu of transit incentive options for businesses and employees to utilize. Um, what we're asking in this motion is for the CLA to work with the Chamber Metro Office. Uh, Office of Finance and CAO, um, and it should include um, a DOT uh, as well. They're traffic demand professionals in the working group. Um, I want to include the city attorney's office, include AQMD. Um, also direct that the ongoing parking cash out analysis be consolidated and folded into this new motion and um, initiative and its efforts and um, also look at instructing for the working group to consider whether state legislative changes clarifications regarding jurisdiction and enforcement mechanisms may be appro appropriate or helpful in reporting back to committee. Um, colleagues, this, this item um, which asks us to look at uh, ways in which we can encourage people to um, and, and particularly businesses uh, to make it easier for people to take public transportation. And one of those is to give pre-tax transportation benefits, um, which they have tried in San Francisco. There's some other areas. I mean, it really could make a difference, uh, and people would be willing to try it. And I want to thank um, the chamber and the FAST group and others to really look at um, uh, moving, uh, moving this ahead. We have some interest on state legislation um, as well, and I know we want to work with the um, city attorney's office uh, uh, in this uh, aspect uh, as well. So it's, it's exciting because um, I think businesses are a key part of this and to give pre-tax. So um, 
And if, I don't know if you all have questions, but we do have two speakers. Maybe we'll hear from them and then see if anyone has any questions. So um, let's see, I have three speakers. Actually, Hillary Norton Orozco, George Wolfberg. Is George still here? George no. left. George left. Okay. And Alex Pugh. So, and what we're going to do is actually, we're recommending is approve the, the motion and for them to create this uh, working group and, and come back. I'm not sure, do we have a date timeline? 60 days, okay. Ladies first. Oh, wow. Um, hi, my name is Hillary Norton Orozco and uh, I am the executive director of FAST, Fixing Angelinos Stuck in Traffic. And I wanted to speak on behalf of this as um, one of the RAND recommendations that we've been working with. And in fact, Rand said that in their experience, if these programs are implemented aggressively, that up to 15% of workers will choose public transportation, especially if they're given the opportunity to not only take the money that businesses would have paid for their parking spots, but then use that money for tap passes from Metro and get the tax benefits. It's actually an economic stimulus plan of its own. And um, thank you very much to this committee and especially to Chair Wendy Gruel for making sure this is part of those opportunities and that the education is there as we begin the new tax year. Thank you. Um, thank you, Alex Pugh with the Los Angeles Chamber of Commerce. And I just wanted to um, commend you, Councilwoman Gruel, uh, and your staff for reaching out to us on this. We really appreciate being able to be part of the solution. And um, in the process of, of thinking this through, we actually surveyed our members, got about um, uh, 40 or 50 responses. Um, and one of the things that came through was employers want to know more about what they can do. Mm -hmm. And the parking, um, or, or rather the pre-tax benefit program, I think was the most interesting to them because it actually um, translates into a direct savings. Um, what we would encourage um, is is that you not make this mandatory at this time. It's it's a tough um, economic climate, but that you work with businesses, and you know the chamber would be happy to work with the city to educate businesses on what they can do and really work together to to reduce traffic. So thank you very much. And there's one. Um, I met a gentleman. Um, I don't know if it's the CEO of um, in, Intuit, the one that just moved into Woodland Hills. Um, with 800 now employees that came in out from outside the city of Los Angeles, very anxious, and they're near the you know orange line and really wanting to look at effective ways. And so we might want to make sure that we include him and, and maybe even have him come to one of the working group meetings um, to see because uh, he was very gung ho about this as I talked to him the other night. So absolutely. So thank you. We appreciated this public-private partnership on that. Thanks. And we'd love to be part of the working group as well. Okay. Great, we'll make sure that FAST is as well. We do have two, so we'll uh, approve that, um, uh, two public comment cards for general public comment, set in Yahoo, I know he's still here, and Arnold Sachs. Thank you. Thank you for your patience in two hours, in, about two hours. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you for this opportunity. Uh, my name is Ntayo Selassie. I'm a member of Los Angeles Taxi Workers Alliance. Uh, I just want to mention uh, we had, uh, you know, DOT has been uh, instructed to come after 45 days to uh, check with neighborhood cities about taxi parking in residential area, and uh, we, were, we didn't see any program. That 45 days has been passed. We're just wondering when that will come back again to okay. you. Uh, do you know the status? Um, both either look at both the CLA and my staff. Oh, yes. Yes. When is that? They think they'd ask for it to come back in 45 days. February is 45 days, or February it's coming back. Okay. We'll chat and see if we can actually get it even sooner than that, but at the, at the latest it's February. Thank we'll you very much. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Mr. Sachs? Uh, yes, thank you. Um, really quickly, um, this is a flyer that was put out by the LADOT, and um, it's major funding the city receives and major funding the city will get. I don't know if you recognize it. It must have come through here for sure. And it lists funding sources and annual amounts, state excise, state excise gas tax, Prop C local return, Prop 42, STPL, 
Prop A local returns, Prop A regional formulas. Section 5307, call for projects, transportation earmarks. Both items, exactly the same, I kid you not. The only difference is in the major funding the city receives is 40 to 60 million dollars. This one is major funding the city will get, says 10 million dollars. The total for the projects of the major funding the city receives is somewhere between 282 million and 349 million. The total for the major funding the city will get is somewhere between 167 million and 199 million. So just out of curiosity, I know I'm not going to get it, but can someone explain the difference of anywhere from 80 million to 150 million? Both papers list the exact same amounts except for one change. Yet there's a difference of 80 million to 150 million, which is not what the change is. Uh, if you could share that with the DOT, um, we'll ask them. Um, this is also, MTA has put out a little game to play, just to show you how this is. And in this game, you're issued <laughs> MTA dollars, except for one problem. MTA funds that they collect bear, don't cover operating costs. These are public dollars. So the same thing would be in effect for the LADOT. I sure would like to have an answer on this, because it affects the projects that are being talked about today. In your meeting. Thank you. Uh, if that's uh, no other public comment card, um, nope. the meeting is adjourned.